Hey there everyone, it's JC. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm showcasing the July 2020 paint of Flower Peonia Japonica and Autumn Harvest Watercolor Brush Marker release. I'll use both crafty items today to share a watercolor card that I nearly gave up on and how I fixed it. If you've never used the watercolor brush markers from Altenew, they're a really great addition to your crafty stash. This is the Autumn Festival watercolor brush marker set, which features a warmer and more subdued color palette that's made to coordinate with each other beautifully. To use these watercolor brush markers for the first time, all you've got to do is untwist the watercolor barrel from the brush end of the marker, discard this yellow ring, you don't need it anymore, and twist back and connect the barrel to the brush end. Give the barrel end of the brush marker a few light squeezes until the brush nib is saturated with concentrated pigment. I like to loosen up the bristles of the brush by doing a few test strokes on a scrap piece of paper. Repeat that nine more times for all ten brushes and you're ready to color until you run out of liquid watercolor. Looking at these concentrated pigments in the barrel and on this scrap piece of paper is misleading. To get a true sense of the color and pigment, I highly suggest you create a swatch chart. So I've quickly made one here on some Altenew watercolor paper, as it is the most common paper I use for watercolor cards. I'll add a very slight swipe of color directly from the marker, and diffuse the pigment with a watercolor brush and some clean water. Making a swatch chart shows color undertone and vibrancy, which in turn tells you how much or how little of the pigment to use on your painting. I'll keep this chart with the watercolor brush marker packaging and refer to it as I'm painting today. To have a look at the watercolor brush markers yourself and other materials used on this card project, don't forget to check out the description box for product links. If you watch my watercolor card series on my channel, it should come as no surprise to you that I have already stretched my watercolor paper. I'm using a fourth panel of the 9x12 Altenew watercolor paper. Then I'll stamp the outline image using the reverse side of my stamp positioning tool to get a uniform impression and exact placement. I use Distress Ink in Antique Linen as a base outline for no outline watercoloring. I won't use the pigments in the markers directly at first, so what I'm doing is laying out the silicone stamping mat from Altenew and adding drops of the color from the marker directly onto the mat. I'll use the drops of color as if they're my watercolor pans and start coloring. As far as the look I'm going for today, I referenced a few photos of peonies and color variants of Peonia japonica. I started with a shadow layer for the flowers and leaves, with winter fog on the petals, and sea forest for the leaves. I used my watercolor brush to pick up the concentrated watercolor pigment, and slowly diffused the pigment from the center of the flower out to the tips. Since these pigments are so concentrated, I figured it would be easy to build color and intensity slowly while I'm painting. I'll put on some music and meet you all at a stopping point.
So I cut out most of the coloring and literally threw in the towel with this one. For some reason, I was being extra critical of my painting and I was not liking how this watercolor panel was turning out. It looked really muddy. Uh, I lost the definition between leaves and petals, and yeah, I was done. Actually, <laughs> I was pretty pissed, so I walked away from it for a bit, had some water, used the bathroom, ate, uh, cried, and when I came back, I decided to reverse the mistake of this loose watercolor by adding in the outline image again. I didn't try to stamp the outline directly over the distress ink from earlier. I instead adjusted the outline so that it looked uh, intentional. And so then it dawned on me that I would try to make this more of a loose watercolor card. Now to be honest, I'm not great at loose watercolor either. I try to focus more on the details and then I lose track of the loose watercolor principle. Or what happens is I end up getting sloppy and rush it and it looks like a monochromatic blob of a flower. So I took this card mistake as an opportunity to let go a little bit. There was no starting over with this card because the photos were due the next day, and I had to get to bed for work in the morning. I carried on and took the markers directly to the paper. If I felt there needed to be more color variation, I just added it. There was no thinking of detail, shadows, petal veining, none of that. In the end, I was surprised that out of my frustration <laughs> came this final watercolor panel. And honestly, even though I was about ready to start over, I ended up liking this panel much more than the botanical illustration type image I was originally aiming for. I let the flowers dry back completely before adding black splatters with jet black ink spray. Then I cut out the panel from the staples and tape and took it to my stamp positioning tool. I mean, after all of that, I really didn't want to mess up the sentiment. I used obsidian pigment ink to stamp directly onto the watercolor panel. Then I glued the panel to my note card base for this final loose watercolor one layer card. I hope you all enjoyed my card making almost travesty. In the end, I learned a lot about trusting the coloring process. If you enjoyed this card, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more card making content and tutorials. All of the materials I used on this card can be found in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and have the best day.